Learn a little something. Take a lesson. Learn it all. Diablo. Con conchanitos. Diablo. Yo bebo. Yo bebo líquido verde. Yo bebo líquido verde. Diablo mucho. Si ahora peleo, peleo. Yo quiero peleo. Si ahora peleo, peleo. Diablo mucho. Mi camisa es morado y también mis pantalones. La alquimia. Fuerza, pero no soy tan fuerte. A menos que tengas muchos beneficios. Diablo. Yo bebo. Yo bebo. Welcome back guys to another champion spotlight. Today is Diablo and he was provided to me through the content creators program from Kabam for a limited time so I can test him out and get my thoughts and my review over to you. Now first before anything you want to know should you grind? Should you buy this dude? Well if you're looking for prestige, yeah, he's up there and he's rocking the highest at that, but this brings back that old adage about champs with the highest prestige not always being the most useful. Well, look, don't get me wrong, he's got some cool stuff, but it's very use cased at best. Let's take a look. Diablo. Well, first things first, his animations look fantastic. He's a well-designed champ that both looks great and moves just as good. It's a lot of fun to pop off the different specials and maneuver through his abilities, but that's kind of an acquired taste, if you know what I mean. His concoctions, which are the base of his abilities, are stacked at four each, so you have to keep this in mind while playing your quest, as well as keeping this in mind while you're executing your combos. Many people like to get in and just mash away and not really think about it. The Sentinels taught us that much, and Diablo is definitely not for the average MCOC swipe masher. You see, each time you press the light attack, it cycles through his concoctions, and the final blow in the combo needs to be a medium attack, as that is the way you set that particular concoction to brew. This also means that your 5 hit combo may not always be around because you're trying to end it early on a particular concoction. Now once you've set it to brew, that doesn't mean that it's active, you still need to activate it and you can do this in a few ways. One is to dash back and hold block and you'll see that timer go ahead and once it's ready, you'll see another timer show up on your actual concoction and now it's active for 12 seconds. The other way is to do it through an SP1 or an SP3, but more on that later. Now if you want to get around this, then you just do four lights all together or mix in your first medium within your lights, but you cannot finish the combo off with a medium. Otherwise, you're going to set that particular concoction that you selected to brew. Now if you have a concoction already brewing, it's just sitting there, then you can go ahead and do your normal 5 hit combo, your medium, 3 lights in medium, or however you want, because none of that will matter until you activate it. So you have to have a pretty good proficiency with the combo system. Luckily, I go through this in detail and instinctive touch. There's the plug. Now what can be a little off-putting here is remembering where your buffs are, what order they're in, and being able to activate them. As you can see here, just going up against Winter Soldier and just trying to dex his special, it automatically activates, and sometimes it's not when I want it to. Even when they're activated, I'm not seeing that much of a benefit 
for the trouble it is to activate them. Now, that being said, Suicides is a must on Diablo, simply because he takes 35% reduced damage from poison effects and he gains a 20% power rate with an additional attack rate increase. Now, this is a 550 of course, so you're looking at 450.4. That's pretty much gonna scale up on a rank four five star up to a rank five five star, uh, but I'm not really sure you're going to be ranking up that high. Diablo. Now let's go through some of these concoctions. Ember Boon gives you burst energy damage of 55% of the damage dealt, plus an additional 20% for each buff the opponent has. And this is really where he shines. Because as you can see in the footage here, heavy buff champs really take a beating off of this. But this is only within the 12 seconds that it's active. I mean, with so many other buff killing champions out there, 12 seconds is really a hard sell when you have people like Morningstar out there. Now, Counterflow gives 110% power over 12 seconds, so you can use this to rush right into an SP3 if you need it. So that is a bit useful, because once you launch an SP3 with an already brewed concoction, then you gain a permanent buff. But more on that later. Now, Life Stitch gives you 848 health and raises your regen rate by 25% over 12 seconds. Now, again, this does scale up as you rank. But then again, it's still an arbitrary amount of health, not a percentage. I would have loved to see a percentage here. Now, Iron Skin gives you 957 attack bonus and stun immunity for 12 seconds. Again, this is another arbitrary number. I would have loved to see a percentage here. Uh, I'm not sure how helpful stun immunity is when you're on the offensive, but for defense, sure. Now, a heavy attack destroys his brood concoction to inflict poison over 10 seconds and reducing healing effects, likely just countering willpower here. Using the SP1, he can be a healing machine, even with suicides, if you play your cards right, but it's pretty small gains, because basically he's going back and he's healing for an another arbitrary amount of health. It's not a percentage. Again, I would have loved to see a percentage here, but it's not. And after recoil kicks in, you really only gain about a percent or two of health. Now, his SP2 is an unblockable attack, which is great. It deals 50% energy damage for each active concoction effect and poison on Diablo. Again, suicides work very well with this because you always have a poison active. Now, if you stack this SP2 with the Ember Boon and you go up against a heavy buff champion, as you saw in that footage, it really does wreak some havoc. But again, it's only 12 seconds and it's very specific. So once you jump on his synergies, basically each one gives him one more concoction at the end of each fight. So you start with the four and you go through your whole quest. One of the disappointments is once you gain all these permanent effects using that SP3, you can't carry them over to the next fight. They're over. And your concoctions need to be refilled through this synergy, otherwise you don't get them. And the team that you have for your synergies, they're not really that strong. So you're left with Diablo and a team that's not that strong trying to go through a quest, and I just don't see that as worth the squeeze. Diablo. Now, I tried Diablo in a variety of content, and it's just a little too complicated for the return that you get. It's a little too much squeeze and not enough juice. A champion that requires this much attention and customization in playstyle should output a lot more, either in raw damage or utility. He's going to go in the average category for me. He's fun to play in the event you're just kind of testing things out. But I mean, you're not going to be jumping to 4.3.6 Venom very often. Diablo. So guys, let me know what you think of Diablo. I know you've probably seen some other reviews and you've seen some gameplay by this point and you've already seen the Champion Spotlight released by Kabam. Let me know what you think. Are you going for him? Are you not going for him? This one is an average in my list, as I said. Not really that excited for him. He does look great though, so hopefully he does get some kind of a buff later on or some kind of a rework uh, because it would be a shame to let a champion that looks this good go to waste. Learn a little sunset, take a lesson, learn it all.